Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. In this short video, we're going to set up a Honeywell NetAx 123 controller with a basic configuration with a 24 seven time zone. Let's get started. These settings are based around Windows 10. We need to change network settings. So right click on the network tab on the icon menu, click on open network and internet settings. This will open a new window. In the window on the left hand side, you'll see a tab that says Ethernet. I click on that link. In that window, you'll see the term at the top, Change Adapter Options. Click on that. On the Ethernet tab, click on Properties. I click on IPv4 settings. Then click on Properties. Change your IP address in this device now using the following IP address, 192.168.1.150, then press tab. After pressing tab, you will notice the subnet window populates. Now press OK. Now our machine is in the same range as the NetAx controller. The preferred browser is Chrome. Open Chrome to get started. Logging into the controller, the default IP address is https colon slash slash 192.168.1.150. Enter the address, then press return. In Chrome, you'll get a warning window. Your connection is not private. Click on Advanced, scroll down, click on Proceed to 192.168.1.150. This will open the NetAx window. The default username for NetAx is admin. The default password is also admin. Type in admin, admin, then click on Sign in. After logging in, it will ask you for a new password. Type in your new password and confirm your new password, then press save. Towards the top of the window, you can see three lines before the word Honeywell. Click on these lines to show the dashboard navigation window. We will use this navigation window throughout setup. Next, we need to configure the panel. Click on Panel Configuration. Then click on Host Loop Communications. We want to change to web. Click on web, press tab three times, and it'll bring the save button. Click on save. Now let's click on card formats. We want to tell each door what format it's going to be. In this case, we're using 38-bit Wigand. So door one, select 38-bit, press save. The same for door two and the same for door three. Each time pressing save.
Next, we need to add the site code. You click on Advanced and then Site Codes. Give your site a name, and in this case, we'll use 14 as the site code. Then press Tick to save. After you've finished, press Refresh and refresh the page. IP addressing. The device can be left in the standard IP address if you like, or you can change it. Simply go to the menu, panel configuration, settings, and in there you can either give a static IP address, or you can leave it as DHCP. I would suggest change it to static and give it a new IP address, or ask your client what their static IP address should be. Once you've inputted the new IP address, press save. Set the time and date. Go to panel configuration, settings, then using the tab key, tab to the bottom of the window so you can see the new time window. I would suggest you change the time to 24 hour format. So in this case, we'll just click on 24, and input the time in 24 hour format, then press save. Next, we'll do the date. Again, just tab to the bottom of the window till you can see the date window. Click on the date. Press save. And that's the time and date set. Adding a card. We're now going to add a card and use the username. Then we're going to add it to a 24 hour time zone. This 24 hour time zone will also give access to all doors. Let's go to the menu, then to dashboard. Then we're going to click on cards. Add a card. Type in the card number that's normally printed on the front of all Honeywell cards. In this case, it's an eight digit number. Once you've added the card, press save. Next, we need to give a name for the person who owns this card. So once it's saved, we're going to go to people, add a person, give them the first name, ADA in this case. Below where it says card, we can assign from a variable list of cards. Click on the plus symbol. The card number we just typed in is now visible. Add that by pressing plus, then press save. Next, we need to add people to an access group. Click on access groups. Add an access group. Tick the available cards that we want to be enabled. In the schedules, we want to make sure it's 24 hour access, 24 hour seven access, and we need to give it a name. Once you give it a name, simply press save.
So far we've added and configured the time, the date, the card format, the card number, the username and the time zone. These should be all the basic features we need to have a card working. Let's test. We'll go to the alarm and event menu. Here you can see all the, li the live events happening. Last event was me updating the database. Next I'm going to present a card. Card found. You can see it's normal so it's not an alarm. That means access was granted.